Peter, you, you've done many things. Yeah. You have set up businesses, you've established organizations and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I want to pick a couple of leadership lessons from it. Right. Because you, you've, you've played leadership many fronts. Right. All right. And just what it takes mm -hmm. just to be able to build the nature and the practice of businesses that you've been able to. What are some of those things that you would say, here is probably my routine, here is my cycle, this is how this, this I run it. <laughs> Of course, my routine has changed over time as I got an older. Yeah. But the corporate athlete, yeah. you know, if you're healthy, so you don't go exposing yourself to illnesses. You don't go expose. You need to be fit. Right. So working out. Right. I, I have done gymming for very many years, but now I run. Right. So I run. I do like 40 kilometers a week of running. So you have to be fit. Right. So I always tell the entrepreneurs: if you don't take care of your of your health. Eventually, it will cost you. Right. All right. Right. The second one, you can't do everything. You have to, to trust people. Third, identify your threshold of pain. Mm -hmm. Don't say, I won't go into business because people will steal from you. They will. Identify your threshold of pain. Fourth, processes and systems. You have to make sure that you have, there are processes and systems on how everything you do. What can I check? Now, the biggest lesson in business, mm -hmm. understand what is coming out mm. of your business? Mm. What are you paying out? Mm. And what's coming in? Mm. Anything in between is none of your business. Right. Let other people take care of that. There, there is this theory that mm. uh, from, from a success standpoint, mm. uh, you've got to build rituals, you've got to build systems, yes. you've got to build routine, yes. you've got to build discipline. A lot of us sometimes function very spontaneously. Mm. I, I don't know whether you're the spontaneous guy no, or you're... No. What, what do you want to say? Routine. You are a routine guy. A routine. Right. So for example... Yep. Sleep. Yep. Yeah. Lights out in my house. Yep. 8, 8.30. 8, 8 p.m. you're asleep. Yes, 8.30. And I will not pick calls after 6 in the evening. Regardless of what it is, I won't pick. Done. Your yeah, day is done. I'll return them tomorrow. And I have that. I return all my calls. So it's waking up. Yeah. Making sure that I don't fall in love with a blanket. Mm. Because most most poor people love sleeping, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> they enjoy. And, you know, yeah. there are time to sleep. The right. will come when you have no choice but to sleep. Right. So waking up early. Yep. So so what time do you wake up? During working days. Right. Six o'clock. Yep. I'm 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 out. All right. And that is after now after COVID. Previously I used to be out by four thirty, so I can go to the gym and all that. Right. But now because I don't know I don't go to the gym, so I wake up six. Seven, I'm in the, I'm in the forest, I'm mm. running. Right. And I, sometimes I run in the forest inside current country club, but in, where I live, there is, there is, there is security. Right. So, so I'm showering 8, 8.30. Mm. Then the emails. Then you start your calls. Morning calls. And this I learned when I was a salesman. Make your calls early. Mm. Get in touch with the people as early mm. as possible. Mm. Because now with cell phones, the calls will come. They, they don't pick up, but the calls will come, and you find many calls. Mm -hmm. And then today, I have in every single day in the five days, mm -hmm. I have, a, I have a, 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 a session with a CEO. Could be a physical meeting. Mm -hmm. Either they come to my house, mm -hmm. or we go to a club, mm -hmm. or go to an office. Mm -hmm. So what are we discussing? The usual. What happened yesterday? What happened last week? What is? Uh, where are we against strategy? Where mm -hmm. are we? What's the cash flow situation? Mm. Why are we targeting market? Mm. What are the challenges you're mm. having? They are mm. always there. Mm. And you structure your life that way. Mm. Every single day. Mm. And then what I do to make, because of variety, mm. different functions. Mm. So there's sports, there's events, mm. there's alcohol, mm. there's, there's the consulting side of my business. Mm. There's the business outside Kenya. Right. I have to speak to the, the, the people. So I make sure that I do You're that. running some business right. out there. Yeah. yeah. Then I have to read. So at any single time, I'm reading a business book mm. and, a, and a fiction book. Who are some of your biz favorite business authors? So, so like, I, who am I? Who am I reading that? Now? An, an unknown guy called S. B. Nataraja, mm -hmm. uh, an Indian writer, mm. and he writes about the, the linkage between your mental state 
and um, in your and your and your business your business state, your family state, and your financial state, and how the linkage is. Mm. Um, very spiritual. Mm. I like Robin Sharma. Mm. Um, so and I pick r- random books like that. Mm. When I was growing up, I used to read all those the the, the, the typical book. Um, uh, Rich father, what does it call? Uh, Rich dad, poor dad. dad. We yeah. all did. We yeah. all we all read those. Right. right. Uh, I get I get producers sending me music. Right. So I have to to I have to review. Yeah. Uh, I, then remember, I have children. Although, thank God, I have one child at home, and she's nineteen. Right. So I still have to engage a doctor because I don't take I don't check diaries. She's in uni. Yeah. But I still we discuss that. Then I have family time. So like Tuesday. Anyone who knows me, Tuesday I have dinner with my children. Every Tuesday. That's locked. It's locked. And I will not break it. If I break it, then we do it on Wednesday. So Tuesday and Sunday brunch. Mm. I've done it. Mm. As a kid, I've gotten older. Mm. And I have kids who I rarely see because they are out of their home. Mm. So then, then Fridays, I hang out with my friends. Right. Yeah. Right. My boys, I see them on Friday. Right. Sunday is family time. Right. Back to the routine. Right. Now, before COVID, my business was 50% travel. So again, that has to be, that, 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 that again has to be coordinated. And then, you know, you have your errands, you have service your cars. No. I'm in two sports. I'm in rugby and I'm in, uh, I'm in equestrian. I'm in the horse racing space. Mm. So mm. I own horses. Mm. So again, you have to make sure the horses are taken care of. They are ready for the races. Then I serve on boards. Social boards. I stopped serving on commercial boards that I'm, I'd have no investment in. So any boards that I'm sitting in, I have an interest. Mm. But I sit on the board of uh, I sit on, on, the, on the board of a rugby, mm-hmm. rugby not club, rugby institution, mm. uh, which is rugby patrons. I sit on the board of jockey club of Kenya because I have to give back. Now, so after all this is how to give back. So I've done two things the last one year that are important. I've set up Pitanduati Consulting. Mm. It was not my. It was not my idea. I'll tell you whose idea it is later. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, right. it's registered now. Yep. We should start trading shortly. Right. And then I set up Pitandoti Foundation. Mm. Pitandoti Foundation came from my idea of giving back. Mm. So, in four universities, I have bursaries of two, two, a boy and a girl, a boy and a girl. Mm. And of course, and uh, in the Grotti High School, I have uh, 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 twenty-four bursaries. Right. Give. Right. Um, and and then I'm, I'm my but my foundation is going to social justice work now. Um, I'm give, I've, I've, I've gotten involved in uh, people who leave prison mm. and how you in, inculcate them into society. Right. No, we don't have because that to integration is, a, is always a challenge. Yeah. yeah. So that's the second area that we are funding. Right. Uh, and social justice. So how do you do that? So this again, I can't. I, I, it's not an original idea. Right. My lawyer yep. was involved in doing pro bono work of getting people who are in remand for a long time who have not been charged. Right. What would happen is. Those people will come out of prison, or out of remand, and they start chasing my lawyer. What? So one day I'm sitting with him, and he's telling me about someone is helping, he's giving him money to to get to, for rent and stuff like that. And I thought, as part of I'm part of the Aspen Institute, mm. and Aspen Institute teaches you um, how to be a good corporate citizen, mm. and and how to get proximate to problems that human beings are facing. Mm. It became a project. And I've taken it seriously. So my foundation is doing that. All right. All right. All right. You see, um, you're running many institutions. Yeah. One of the things that we see with a lot of Kenyans is the fact that they're in, they're in that hustle, that other hustle, that other hustle. And eventually, neither of them gets to work. Yes. But you seem to be running, you seem to have mastered that craft okay. of just how to do it. Mm-hmm. And I'll be just curious to how and how, how, do you, how do you manage? And what how do you manage to do that? So remember, I worked... I worked for 30 years for other people. Yes. And in those years, I've served in various positions. Right. So one thing I, I think I'm very good at mm. is taking products to market. Mm. Second, mm. identifying people, supporting them to do the things that I like to do. Mm. I also identified that I'm very poor in, in, in operations. Mm. So I let other people do that, but I know what to check. Mm. Now, I have a philosophy. Mm. Inspect what you expect. Mm. And inspect you, what you inspect expect. What you expect. Right. And if you inspect what you expect, things will come. Man, that's a quote right. of quote. Yeah. Inspect, inspect what, what you, you expect. expect. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So and, and that's what happens. Mm. 
I'm 53 years old. Right. There is no way I can have the same energy that I was when I was 29 when I started my first year. Right, right. So I have to trust people to run. Mm. But I also need to learn how to check mm. what is expected. Mm. There are many times I call people who work with me mm. or for me. Mm. And I remind them, hey, by the way, you know we were supposed to have done? Where are we? Mm. Where are we on this? Mm. And there are days I'll understand my energy levels and I won't do as much. Mm. But there are days my staff can tell you, mm. I am on the Yes, I say something. Yeah, right. I'll do this. Where are we on right. this? Where are we on this? Right. Yeah. But, but so did you, would you say there have been sequel in terms of how you established them mm. um, and establishing the systems and all of that? I mean, having five, six businesses running at the same time is no joke. Nine businesses yeah. running at the same time. Yeah. Is it that we, we build these, establish it to a certain point, build the last? Ah, or, so in the beginning, yeah. you, can't do, you can't do that. Yeah. So you need to, you need to be, the, the first t time you need to be a corridor investor. All right. A corridor investor sets up a business, make success out of it, mm. take the proceeds yep. and sets up another That's, one. Yes. Build it. Yep. Like yep. Now am I a serial entrepreneur? They have, like, for example, when I invest in the stock market, mm. I don't run those businesses, but I, I expect a yield. Yep. I used to do real estate mm. myself. Mm. And I realized I don't get it. Mm. So what happened? The properties that I own are with an agency. Mm. So what, I, what I'm measuring is yield. Mm. Then the business is where I'm a leader. Either um, um, I'm, I'm a sole proprietor mm. or I'm the chairman. Mm. Then I delegate to the board. And on the board, you make sure there's a strong financial person, mm. a strong commercial person, mm. a strong operational person, mm. a strong people, people's person. Mm. People are key. So... Since I've done this for long, mm. I'm able to check on, on those things. All right. So the, the I also have decided that I'm no longer chasing wealth. That was a problem. I had a number for a long time. Long, long time. Of what you're chasing? Ah yeah, and I chased. And I and I one day I, I found out I had achieved it, and then I lost all of it. Then you go, you know, no valuation. That that's why I hit that billionaire, millionaire tag. Because at any single time as a business, it's very difficult to know your worth. Because your worth is, is what people can pay. So if you look at a business that I own, for example, now the, the, the distribution business, that, which is my main business mm. today. Mm. At a single time, at any single time, I'm so, I, I think it's worth X amount. Sometimes it's less of that because this year it made this profit. With, and, and also, a lot of people gauge your worth on cash basis. Your worth has very little to do with cash. Sometimes you need to sit back and say, is it possible to liquidate everything I own and convert it to cash? No. So, and, I, and that was my mistake. I used to chase cash. I also used to chase what's sitting in my bank. And what's sitting in your bank is worth nothing. You need to leverage what you're sitting, what, what, and, if, and you owe banks at any single time. So, do I have a net worth paper? Yes. When I plug in sometimes and I check how much do I owe. Here is my balance sheet. Yeah, it's my balance sheet. Right. Remember also, some things are emotional valuations. Right. For example, I'm in a creative space. Right. The right, music rights that I own are worth what I think they are worth. <laughs> right. Now, land. Right. And develop land. Right. It's worth what I think it is. Right. Unless someone comes and gives me a check of what he thinks, that's the value. Yep. Be private enterprise. Yep. Because it's not listed. Mm. At any single time, I can bring you as an expert. Mm. You do a give a valuation. Yes. I do my valuation. Right. Bring someone else to a valuation. Right. Some people do so, so discounted cash flow valuation, mm. net, 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 net asset value valuation. So mm. I did a single time as an entrepreneur. Don't focus on that. Mm. I just find like media, thank God you're not a journalist. Mm. That's not something they want to focus on. Yep. How much do you think you're. I have no idea. Mm. People will tag and tell you whatever you're worth. Mm. So you live, you build a home. You live in a good area. Mm. Some people come look at them. Oh, this house is worth 200 million. Right. Oh, really? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. How much do you think it's worth? I said, don't think about that. How much did you spend? I, said, I have to go back and calculate. I yeah. built a yeah. house 10 years ago. I'm yeah. not building it. Yeah. Oh, that flat. Oh, that apartment. Oh, yeah, I bought it for 10 million. What is it worth now? It is worth what I want to sell at the time that I want to sell. Right. A lot of, a lot of entrepreneurs you got into that, you get into that issue. Mm. The other thing that we struggle with is comparing. Mm. At any single time, mm. 
there are people who are doing better than you Absolutely. and worse than you. Absolutely. And unfortunately, we all focus on people who are doing better. Now, if I look at guys who are in, uh, in school with me, mm. I'll, do, I'll look at Alfred Mutu and I think, Okay, what happened to me? That guy is doing better than me. Right. Maybe he's looking at someone else who is doing better than me. And, <laughs> and asking himself the same questions. Is he doing better than me? Right, right, you never right. Know. It's a relative question. Many, At some point, many, it becomes many, a relative many, question. Many, relative. Right. So, and that's the life you live. But then, at the end of the day, then, it's also calibrated with your own aspirations. Where did you want to go? Correct. Right. Yeah. So now, in your 20s. Right. And that's advice I'd like to give, right. to give your, your, your audience. Yes. In your 20s. Yep. You're identifying your career. Right. Your career is not what you studied. Right. Okay? In your 30s, you're, you are setting your career. That's investment period. So before you go to the 30s, on the 20s, you say your career is not what you studied. Not what so you what studied. is it? Your, your, my, my advice is your passion. Follow your passion. Yeah, because yep. I, did, I studied economics. Right. Right. All the way in India. In India. Right. During the holidays, because my parents couldn't bring me all the time, I have a HR diploma. Right. I probably then should have gone into HR because <laughs> I become a HR, I, HR. A practitioner within yes. HR, right. Right. I have an advanced management program from Strathmore. I can, I can do finance. Right. Okay. Right. I could have done that. I have a master's degree in insurance. I don't do insurance anymore. You started and, and left it. <laughs> right. You get Right. So, what has stuck over time is your passion. Yes. Right. And my passion, I just realized, is I'm able to identify gaps in, in opportunities in business and take advantage and fulfill, fulfill that particular gap. My, the boss who brought the best out of me, a, a gentleman called Jagega Kunjo, right. was a lawyer. Right. He was a salesman. He taught me how to sell. So don't be caught up that, oh, I did art, so I have to be an artist. Oh, I did accounts, I have to be, a, to, to be an accountant. No, 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 no. That's what you do in your 20s. And a lot of them actually do what their parents a lot push yes. them to do. Not even I mean, if, I did, if I really did what I wanted to do, I'd have been a musician full time. Would I have been successful? I think so. Because you're very passionate about yeah, it. Yes, I would have been. Yeah, but I didn't. <laughs> right. And those days, you, fo you, fo you follow that. Right. I was passionate about insurance. I loved insurance. So, what did you, so when, the time you you're getting into your 30s, yes. in your 30s is your growth phase. Right. That's when now you, you, you become an expert in what career you've selected. Right. If you decided that your career now is to be a photographer, right. that's when now you perfect it. And, and you like build. person was identified in the 20s. Exactly. Now then you set it up. You build your brand. On the 30s. And the 30s. Right. My advice to people, that's where you go into business. Right. In the 30s. In the 30s. Because you have time to make mistakes. Correct. If it fails, you can get a job. Right. You fall back. Yeah, yes. you can fall back right. to that. And you can try and again. Maybe you still have some support from here and there. You can try again. Right. 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 Brand building. You've just talked about that. Brand. Yeah. So how, some, some two, three thoughts about, about brand, brand building. Then, yes. Okay. People buy brands. Right. Okay. Right. And a brand is not a logo. Right. Okay. Right. A brand is how people relate to the product that you're selling. Right. The heartbeat of the of, of the brand, not the look and feel. You can change the look and feel. Mm. Okay. And the brand has to be able to be converted to monetary. You have to be able to monetize a brand. Mm. And an, a human being is a brand. Mm. In fact, I know I'll tell people. If you all of a sudden start take, taking fads that all of a sudden there's a new style of dressing and you take it, it means in your 30s you never developed your, your sense of dressing mm. and your look. Then you stick with it. Mm. If you look at Kina, like, most those wealthy entrepreneurs, they establish like a look and they dress the same way until they, yeah, they, they, they die. So that's when you're building a brand. Mm. Experiment with a side mm. hustle. Mm. Experiment with setting up a business. Mm. If you fail, mm. you try again. Mm. 40s investment, yeah, investment phase because in the 30s, you're really you're investing in yourself. But the one question I want to know in the 30s, you, you've talked about monetizing, yes, and, and I think it's a space that many people sometimes have a difficulty doing. Okay, I am this, I can do this, and I can do X, Y, and Z, but yes. just monetizing that space. So, why are you doing something if you can't monetize it? They want they desire to. The question but is, but you built a brand, right? So, you position yourself. I've worked for company A, yep. and I'm good at what I do. Right. How else can I monetize that skill? Right. You built a brand. Mm. So you're a content producer, mm. and you're, you're building content. Mm. How are you going to monetize that mm. content? Mm. It may not give you the, con the return now, but you need to learn how to monetize. How can I position this myself to be able to get a return? Mm. I haven't earned a salary in a long, long time. 
but I survive by being able to monetize my brand. The fact that I can go and speak to people and they pay me to speak. That's exactly why I asked you that question, because you're strong in monetizing. Oh, yeah. And there are many guys who are very gifted, passionate about monetizing. But what they, they don't do, know how to monetize. How to monetize. <laughs> and that's why I asked that question. Like you're a pastor, you're a preacher, but you're not monetizing that skill that you have. Yeah, you have to be able God, to monetize. God used me, and therefore you're... you're no, then you move no, 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 no. Right. You have to monetize. So that's that is. Right. 40s yep. is when now, it's called your investment phase. Okay. You have surplus income. Mm. Okay. You need to invest outside the, where you are, so by diversification. Mm. In Kenya, real estate will always do well. Mm. So you get income that you don't have to work for. You've invested. Mm. So supplemental income mm. if it's in your 40s. Because you, by the time you're reaching 50, you have to, you have to slow down. Mm. Right. Mm. Now, then... In your 50s, it's time, and that's when you start feeling you're getting yield. Now what's happening? You're finding a lot of people who've been taken to jail because they've stolen from an employer, people killing themselves in their early 30s. A guy who is 30 wants to drive the car I drive and live in the house that I live, he must have stolen. Mm. Okay? Yep. Or he's such a super creative that cre he created a hat and got <laughs> money. <laughs> <laughs> it is not possible that you have not, there's no possible that you can live the lifestyle. I cannot live the lifestyle of guys in their 70s who work all their life and oh, invested yeah, and have been successful. So that's what happens. Now, so in effect, telling the party guy, take it in your strides. Yeah, there's a, it's okay for you not to be driving come. more than 50 year old oh. drives. Eventually, that will come. The late, the late Simeon Yachai. Right. I used to love the way he used to speak. Then he was telling us, no, me, I'm driving on the road. He used to drive that time a 7 Series BMW. Right. He says, it's owned by a bank. Right. And it's true. <laughs> <laughs> and it's true. Right, right. So, so you buy a car, you, you bought a car, you're driving a 50 million shillings car. And a guy half your age wants to drive the same car. He has no idea about your hustle. But then that rush, right. it's a cool. One day, if 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 you keep the faith, right. work hard, right. and, and follow your passion, yep. that will come. Right. And I know I'll tell people, learn from us, from the mistakes that we made as older people. Yep. If you if you do it, you can even get there earlier. Right. Right. Because right. you don't have to make the same mistakes. Exactly. Right. And but please don't compete with your peers. That, that's why you know. Mm. Yeah. Not to depression, depression ah. like this. <laughs> because you want to live like the other person. And, you know, there's also facade. Mm. You want to, you fake it. You also, you see, you're seeing your age mates uh, living in a particular place, they're dating a particular person, mm. and you want to live the same mm. kind of thing. Mm. You shouldn't. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 not gonna uh, work. No, it's, not it's, it's definitely yeah, not but those are work. those are leadership lessons. Yeah. Um doing business with family, and some another lesson that I talk about all the time. Mm. Um not advisable. Mm -hmm. You can't hold family accountable. Mm. Um the Asian population have done it very, very well. Right. But it's because of their culture. Yep. They're living in the same house. Mm. They understand structure, mm. matriarchal. Mm. So we are all at home. You eat together mm. and you discuss business. And mm. there's, there's respect of the oldest mm. or the most skillful. Mm. You may find an Indian family has five boys, but the last one is who they, they listen to. Mm. That happens because their culture. Mothers are around and control a lot. Mm. First, it's a complete more family. Right. So, and these are my own, my, 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 my own lessons. Mm. Scaling, mm. cult, uh, res respecting cultures. Mm. The first time I invested in Tanzania, yep. I had come from Uganda. Right. And I tried to replicate. Uganda, I moved very fast and I set out very fast. Mm. I tried to replicate that. And I realized totally different culture. Places where if it rains, people will not come to work. All of us, or you, where, where you go to, when you wake up in the morning and you go to the office. Greetings alone. Good morning. How are you? You can't walk into an office and say good morning. There is a process. And you have you cannot walk in and don't talk to people. You've got to take the time and first. So you So the Tanzania you have to almost greet everyone ah, before. See so almost you have to. And the, the greetings you have in the morning is not the greeting you'll have after lunch. And they expect, you know, so you're walking, say it's a tea girl. Right. She'll I'm quite you. So 
if you are older they say shikamole and say marhaba unaweza kulala unalaje umetokaje umeanza you come back from lunch sasa chakula la sasa sabari sasa hizi you can all of a sudden now come and say good morning and then you go, and, and you move no because you expect this person to work for you and to produce in a particular way you have just disrespected their culture and it's not going to work it won't work so working in those and i spent six years in 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 Tanzania, in Tanzania. okay it's it you you need to understand you 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 there there, there are places when you go when you go to Uganda again the culture is very different and that's that's the issue of scaling you 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 scale understand the culture establish employ locals okay get them to grow and let also the business will never look the same yeah. for example if you walk into microsoft in kenya it's run by kenya mm. it doesn't look like the microsoft world. now do the owners of microsoft come to kenya no but are they making money in kenya absolutely yes. why you put systems and right. processes right that replicate you right so there you have dashboards to check so that that's what i do in business right the only business that needs me is pitanduati consulting right you know my foundation i don't make decisions on who we fund what projects we do because you set up teams so applications come the foundation people look at and decide okay we're going to pay school fee for this one we're going to pay for this one we're going to fund this social justice project that's what happens wow wow secret on 24 hours but i think one of the things is 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 just even about your own personal discipline and just the staying power through all of these things and just even the clarity of thought of what works what doesn't work where to do what to invest in all of that stuff mm-hmm. i think it's also a very important one as, as part of your success journey it is now discipline is a key one yeah. and you and you said it twice leadership is about discipline mm. and then keeping to to your faith keeping to the path mm. that you've selected mm. and decided look i am going to see this through i've started it yes. it's hard yes there's a word in strategy we call pivot right so how how you also need to learn how to pivot is this working yes no it's not how can i make it better and and you know there's something called product life cycle that we did in economy yes on a, on a pro, pro, product is growing you need to understand whether it's tapering off plateau okay you either change the product so or more power form mm. or more power form plus plus plus, plus. plus yes. yes yes so that to maintain his life cycle right but then it starts going down and decide no let me take this product out right in that period you launch another another product right and life is like that in mm. business mm. the businesses have failed because of circumstances like covid the businesses that have failed because it's no longer relevant i used to own simu yajami and i had many of them mm-hmm. you and my i used it man i used it man i used it so today and you talk about simu yajami right yeah i used to sell pages yeah <laughs> <laughs> so is that exactly man, you are with it you are really, with the times yeah, of the time yeah, yeah, yeah. yes yeah. like i'm paging services and became an agent and <laughs> so yeah. you that's so 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 relevance mm. there are some things we are selling today that may be irrelevant to the people tomorrow okay but you need to identify when to 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 let go when you need to understand it. cycles of business right and then don't don't get too depressed when things are not working because things will turn around there are time real estate in kenya was booming mm. okay right now all, all the apartments you're seeing are to let to let to let landlords have dropped rates by 50% there's nothing wrong the fundamentals the business the product is worth exactly the same price if you right. think about it right. it just cycles we're getting out of the epidemic all of a sudden now if i was if i had cash right now i'd be buying i'd be picking up this half empty apartments because in a short while demand will Maybe come back 2023 after elections as we st- when we stabilize demand will come and the price will go up 
but real estate is a whole different kettle of fish. It's a whole kettle. Oh. But again, you, 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 I think you shared the, the, the lesson earlier you talked about. Don't, don't jump into stuff you don't also understand. Yeah. I mean, take take your school fees somehow yeah. differently pay, before pay, you fully pay, pay, jump pay, in. Pay, school. pay some school fees pay before school, you jump school. in. Yeah. Sometimes I drive on the road and I find there's a kayak plus a kayak and another kayak and another kayak and ask. So understanding economics, perfect competition. But right. Seriously. I'll go there and I'll, the same car is there. All I have to do is say I'm being offered there for that price, then this guy has to drop it. And if I have money, I'll push it down. I don't understand. But the, I'm not saying that the people in it, in it don't know what they're doing. They obviously do, but I don't understand it. Right. So I won't invest in it. So you can't invest in that thing no, of significant until skill until, until you understand, I understand how it works. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And, and, and I think that is important because then you can't build like with the Joneses. I mean, uh, you're just trying to do, the, they are selling tomatoes, you're also selling because tomatoes. Then, it doesn't work, man. I'm told by people who do hospitality yep. that the most profitable product in Kenya yep. is a potato. You cut it, put it in oil, you fry it, and you sell it for 500%. Okay. Sounds very simple. Right. But the intricacies there, location, yeah. how do you sell, right. what condiments do you serve right. it with? Right. Because you, you won't just sell the, the, the fries that they are. So, I don't want to say in Kenya, if anybody sleeps hungry, they've chosen to. There are so many opportunities, and every day I see opportunities. And I've gone through some phases and I think, I wish I was younger. And I can see the difference. And then you don't need to be an innovator. You can be an improver. For, for example, you are not the first content provider. Yep. Wengi but then you saw a gap. Right. It is, you see? Right. I never created insurance. Or even when you started insurance. Yeah. It's in the you and improved on stuff. Like that. Yes. Yep. And, um, I, you get a niche market. So uh, my advice to your audience is also... And that's very powerful. Because be if you think about resolution, I mean, insurance was already there. It was there. There were 39 companies. And by the time by the time I was selling it, we were number one health insurer. So those, those things happen. Don't be afraid to enter a business because it exists. There's always, there's always a gap. And I tell, I t I'll tell my audience all the time, do not be afraid. Look for what works for you. Look for the niche. What is failing? Now, human needs. There are so many pains that human needs are uh, that humans are requiring. Sort out one of their pains and you become a billionaire. Hu money comes out of sorting out human needs. Mm. Convenience. Mm. Who would have thought 10 years ago that I could sit in my house and go to my phone and someone will go to the supermarket shop for me and deliver? And I haven't left. Or that I can get food delivered to my house. Mm, mm. Just be things we used to see on TV. Today. Yeah, the Yokibanda, forget big, big brands. Yep. Yokibanda is delivering to right. you. They just right. found. So that is, there's a gap in that, in fact, in that particular space. The issue of human convenience, huge. Take something from where it is and take it to a person who needs it. That value addition. They are, they are very, they are, they are, yeah, yeah, there are very many opportunities. I just keep wondering as I listen to you, is it that you have a different set of lenses that you see opportunities all over the place? I mean, there are many people who live around the same space. But they're, they're they're the <laughs> okay, so let me tell you something. Do you know where the greatest ideas are? Right. In the graveyard. People die with ideas, but they are afraid to execute. So yeah. what does it take? The identifying and executing. So what does it take? There are people who daily yep. wake up and see an idea. Right. But what do many people say? I see a capital. Right. Who the hell wants to require capital? Capital is chasing ideas. Right. If you have an idea, you can find capital. All these venture capitalists, and in Kenya there are 76 venture capitalists. They are looking for, for people with ideas who have attempted proof of concept, and they'll put in cash. I started that business of mine with zero money. Which business? The insurance company. I didn't have any money. So how did you start with that? I mean, that's a big brand. I mean, yeah, but I didn't have... Remember, I worked in the insurance industry. Yes. I could do a business plan, and I had, I had experience of execution right. for other people. So I could go to... In the people who invested in me, friends and family, right. was because they knew... This guy understands it. So that's the capital you had. Yes. The expertise, experience Correct. within that. And the shares that I got was social capital. Right. But what happened? I bought out everyone over, over 14 years. Right. Bought them. Right. Then I sold the company. Wow. So now, whenever someone tells you, oh, the reason I can't start a company is seen a capital, 
So it's which capital and you have it? Because there are many sorts of capitals. It's cash you don't have. Kudamuntu. Yeah. Anadopa ali. Right. If you can demonstrate your passion, right, and you can show that I'm able to execute this, right, okay, all you need to do is go to an investor. An investor has time cost of money. Yep. Let's say the yield they are getting in the bank is nine percent. Right. If you can show that investor, you can make him fifteen percent, and manage the risk that he doesn't lose his money. He'll put in money, and that's what happens. All these funders are looking for opportunities. Right. So you had a capital in a different space. And just that it was an energy. And energy. So when you, people say, I don't have capital, I, I, I ask, what capital? Yep. This, 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 this human capital. Right. That is talent. Right. Okay. And we all have and it. And we all have it. Right. Yeah. Sweat capital. Right. That's energy that right. I can be able to find a job. Kabisa. Kabisa. And for that, I should get shares for oh, Absolutely. That. All right. Right. And then this, this cash. Right. That people say, okay, I need, I need cash to buy this and the other. Right. So when you say you don't have capital, that's a place you need social capital. Yeah. Social Some capital, of your networks, social capital. Yes, you are built over period. Right. Yes. Right. Now, when you look at all that, right, you will never. Okay, it's not possible to have all of them at the same time. Right. The capital that people are usually talking about is money. Right. Okay. Now you come to me, you have a business idea, and you want me to invest in your business. Do you know the first thing I check is the passion for it. Hmm. Right. The second one is how well do you understand it? Mm. So you say, you come, you come to me and you tell me, look, um, I want to start a restaurant. I, I don't even think I'll reach five questions mm. before I can tell. Mm. Okay. What type? Where, where is the market? Mm. What's your competition? Mm. Okay. And what's your edge? Because mm. there are other people. They won't get you to stand out. Right. Right. You, you, I won't even reach five. Right. I'll be able to tell. Right. The passion. Right. Safe. I'll ask you a question about the industry, mm. like that. and if you mm. can't answer it, mm. then I already know. Right. So, so what happens? There are many. Forget me as an angel investor. Mm. There are structured investors in this country. Mm. Venture. Mm. There are accelerator programs in mm. Kenya. Right. Who are looking? We are looking to invest. Mm. But people come with half-baked ideas. They haven't paid their school fees. You read the business plan. It doesn't make sense. Mm. If you can't write a business plan, mm. what is your first investment? Go and get someone who can help you write it. Even in music. Mm. There are people who come and tell me, Ah, I mean, a talent, son, and I say, mm. I tell him, mm. so give me something. Mm. Yeah, give me your music. Mm. Oh, no, 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 no. I've never recorded. I told mm. him, I tell him, do this. Mm. Take time. Mm. Go to a commercial studio. Mm. Invest. Record. Commercial studios will charge you 5Gs, 10Gs. Right. Record. Right. Then you go around to record labels. Mm. It's called a demo. Yeah. With a demo. Then right. I, I know. But you can't tell me you're going to talent it because your cousin told you. Mm. I do not hear me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's good to go Jamie. Right. But you must have made an investment. Right. Not cash. Invest in that. Invest in right. it. Right. Right. So you want me to come yep. to identify you have a talent mm. and pay for you studio time. That work like that. That work like that. It has happened. I mean, when we signed the money, G. Yep. The, first of all, the capital she had was social. Right. She had gone viral. Right. So I already knew that when they released her first song, it was all hits. hits. Right. So those are very rare. Right. They're very, very right. rare. Right. Best artists have to have time to invest. Yeah. Same thing with any business idea. Right. right. So what did I tell you? That most ideas are. In, the, in graveyard. the graveyard. Right. Because people are afraid. You have this idea, and then you stay with this for years, you don't attempt to execute. Mm. The fear of execution mm. is what kills most business ideas. Right. I would rather start. Yeah. I know 60%, and I'm learning as you go. As, as you go. Right. And then as you learn, you there's no plan in the world that comes out the way it was done. Right. You have to people keep on trying. Yeah. Right. Adjust, adjust. Right. right. And then one day, Success just comes. You build clarity even as you go. Correct. There's one beautiful lesson you picked in the last one minute. Mm. We have to unpack this term called capital. Capital. Understand what it is. And, and stop feeling deprived. Yeah. Because you definitely have something. It is there. And you have something to start it with. It is there. It is there. Yeah. It is there. Yeah, okay. The final one on that issue. Yep. Don't attempt to own everything. Right. Allow the people around you to share with you. Okay in what you're trying to create a success of. Mm. You have a network. Mm. Your network could be could help me sell my product. All right. Why don't I give you a stake in the business because of your network? Right. You have you have people who are working with you. Mm. Give them a stake, give mm. them a stake mm. in what you're trying mm. to do. Mm. Give, structure it in a way that they can see a gain. Otherwise, you build all that experience and the next competitor come and purchase them. 
So that those are some of the lessons that I've learned. Wow. Mm. And that helps investedness also on their part Correct. into what it is that you're doing. But yeah, also, also keep, keep learning. I mean, who would have thought the Kodak was going to close one day? No one. And what happens? Digital cameras came in and they ignored it. So at this good time, keep your eyes out. New technology is coming. Okay. The, the, those are lessons that we learn, we learn daily. And every day, it's a new lesson. Right. Hmm? Wake right. up tomorrow. Right. Kitum <laughs> in Akuja. So make... keep your eyes open, keep your ear on oh, the ground. Yeah. Right. The, the second largest business in the world is Tesla. Right. Ten years ago, there was no electric car. Didn't even exist. And then we're saying, there, uh, everything has been invented. No, no. A lot of things that have not been invented. So wake up and just deal stuff, man. How it works. Peter, man, I want to thank you so much for your time and invaluable, invaluable. I hope when guys, uh, when you open up the Peter Andrade Consultancy, man, guys just can just sign up, man. to marketing and exporter. Right, right. Mm. Fantastic, man. Folks, man, I hope this has been helpful. Just listening into that journey and building off of that journey. Amazing, amazing stuff. As Peter Duarte says it, man, a lot, a lot lies in the grave. And one of the questions and the challenges we want to keep posing is, man, you can't take the gold mine into the grave for fear of trying to execute, for not learning. Just keep your eye, uh, uh, eyes open and your ears on the ground and just keep learning and keep building. And I hope all the lessons that Peter Duarte gave us today continue to make it easier and more possible for you to become everything that you are truly, truly meant to be. want to thank Peter and Duarte for just coming through. Check out for Peter and Duarte Consultancy and you, you will suddenly benefit out of it, man. And until next time, we say God bless you. Don't forget to follow us on the Goldmine Show. Subscribe right about now. If you have not followed us on Facebook, man, hit that thing and just follow up. Check us out on Instagram as well. And most importantly, man, share and spread the word and let other people benefit from all of these conversations, man. Until next time, you're a goldmine and never stop working on the greatness inside of you. Go to the grave empty, as Peter and Duarte just told us just a short while ago. God bless you, and see you next time.